It is nine minutes past three. This is rather wet and windy Wednesday afternoon, but I've got something that will cheer you up, some live music. We have the fabulous blues rock band Al Ross and the Planets in our live lounge, and they decided not to go the usual route, not to go to a record company and knock on their door uh, to make their first album. Instead, they booked themselves into Studio 2 at Abbey Road Studios and created their debut album called The Planets One, produced by uh, none other than Paul McCartney's sound engineer. So we're in safe hands here. They are in our live lounge right now and here they are playing Wonderland. There's a place I once knew not long ago that you may know I'm still lost there trying to find you. darkness that's the way it is that's the blues I guess I got no regrets no regrets no but I'm still standing trying to understand Thank you so much, Al Ross and the Planets, which is actually Al Ramirez and Paul Miller. And they're going to be joining us in the studio in just a second. Their album, as I was saying, recorded in none other than Studio Two at Abbey Roads. It's called The Planets One. The uh, latest single, which we'll hear in a second, is called The River. And uh, these guys, they've been performing for many, many years. They've been friends for decades, but they've only just decided to record this album. So there's going to be a very interesting story behind it I have no doubt and we have the lovely Al in the studio and Paul good Paul come on in too grab a microphone go on green actually it's Alex sorry oh, Paul, Alex. Paul so is sorry. the Oxford boy who was supposed to be here oh, but unfortunately got he couldn't be so you've got Alex, Alex, instead, Alex do you so. have any connection to Oxfordshire no, no. Okay, just, then. But Paul just, is Paul is the Oxford boy, so he's the, he's the connection. I just love the pubs here. Yeah, they are very good. Good to perform in as well. Well, welcome. Thank you so much. What Thank great you sounds, very much. Thank um, you. guys! I feel like we we have to start with Studio Two 
Abbey Road, not least because I think last week it was the 50th anniversary of that Yeah, it was famous, all on television, that's right, yeah. You know, did, did have you done the photo of you guys walking along yes. the Pelican? Of course well, we you have. have Everyone has. Five in the morning. Um, have you? <laughs> there's not many other people <laughs> there, I'm imagining, really, Alex. Really quiet time. <laughs> and how was it, though, being in that famous studio recording? It was album? absolutely colossal. I remember we did, we, we actually worked very efficiently on the album so we did um we did 11 tracks and we did four sessions at abbey road and then we um we actually did uh, one session in oxford um just outside oxford Fab. um and then we went back to abbey road for one more session to do um, just some overdubs Tinkering. and then we did the mastering and everything there but i remember the first session we did i was so overwhelmed because obviously being massive beatles and pink floyd's fans we were actually in this room which has actually changed very little i mean if you go in there the only thing they've, they've done that's different now is they put a sound booth at the back but you wouldn't really notice it but the flooring you know the the walls it has not changed since the day john and first walked wow. in there so there's this aura when you go in there and it was the first time it really i mean i've been in there before actually but when we went to record in there and we were actually using microphones, Chris Bolster said, oh, these are the microphones the Beatles used to use. I mean, I know you're a complete freak there. <laughs> but, you know, we, we were just overwhelmed. But we actually did a really good session. We, we only did two tracks that first day because we thought, oh, but actually we did them in three hours and then I thought we should have done another one later. So we actually, it was a very nice, easy session. And then the second time we went back, I remember feeling this is a bit like being at home now. And we did four tracks on the second day. And on the third session, we did five. So that was very, very good Building work. up. Yeah, it was just, it's just so easy now in this. And what a, a really <laughs> wonderful memory of Abbey Road is, um, I remember, you know, Miles Davis kind of blew that album. That was a big influence on all of us. And um, I always got the story that Miles Davis went with the others into the studio. And they just literally just went in, turned on the machine and started playing. And I said, it'd be great to do that with us. So the first track on the album is called My Love For You. We actually just did it live in this and we've got this beautiful cavernous sound that is an Abbey Road studio too, which you hear on the Floyd and Beatles albums. And it was just, that for me was one of the most magical moments to actually do that. And we had the lights dimmed in studio too. And we think everything that's been created in there, it was, it was just unbelievable. The problem is once you record it there, you can't go anywhere else. I mean, nowhere else is going to come close to that. So maybe wow. Studio One, but anyway. <laughs> maybe Studio One, that'll be the next album, studio guys. Three, maybe. <laughs> no, we're, we're looking to go back actually and do the follow-up because it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's been great. It's been very well received, the album. So people like it. So... We're thinking let's go do another one. Well, the, the, this is going to sound rude though, but how has it taken you guys so long? Because you have been friends for decades. Yeah, you? we 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 go back. Alex and I go go back to when we were teenagers. But um, we basically had a rhythm and blues band called Our Ross and the Planets, and uh, well, it was called that. It was originally called the Planets. But I remember in those days in London, you had Time Out magazine. And the planets was right down the alphabetical order. So we thought, okay. Clever. Get the A in. And so, like and Laura Lee Davis, who was the, um, the music editor at the time, she came down to see us at an, an old place in Covent Garden called, um, oh, what was it called? Brahms the Brahms List. And she gave it a great review. She said, one of the best nights out in London. So, of course, that was there. So we got this really big following. But we were mainly just a blues band. And then Alex was then, then Jericho. For, you probably might remember then Jericho. Alex was the keyboard player, then Jericho. So I was in and out of our house at that time. But... And then we were kind of dipping in and out of it. And then, you know... Alex and I wrote quite a lot of songs together. And then we got together with George, who, who, who wrote Love is Murder. And then we got together with Paul, Oxfordshire boy. And Ringo and... and no. Paul, yeah, Ringo's <laughs> down the road. Well, and then we just <laughs> thought, let's do this. So we just started gigging in London. So we, you know, we were playing The Half Moon and we were playing um, you know, the, Brown the Blues Kitchens. Well, that, that was before, but now, more recently, the um, Troubadour Club. It was just perfect friends conversation. It wasn't that then, Alex. Yeah, was, oh, come on. Oh, he's getting, he getting old. Now. <laughs> and then we thought, let's go and record this stuff. And um, you know, we'd had all this, we, we, we've actually got the second album written as well, but there's loads of stuff we've done and Paul's written and George has done. So I think the best place we played was a cavern, though, wasn't it? Cavern. We played the oh, cavern in Liverpool in uh, November. Clang. That was uh, yeah. That was really <laughs> that cool. Was was, was that good too? That was oh, very was good. Amazing. <laughs> that was special. I played a bit. I played it wasn't a bit before, to do with the Beatles or anything. Just, <laughs> yeah, you guys chasing around where that, the Beatles that was, that was have great. been just to inhale the creativity <laughs> from yeah. the. And there was a Beatles <laughs> covers band playing that night as well. What so was that? They were colossal. Were, were they good? good? Oh, they were excellent. Was, yeah, they were really good. But, <clears throat> but they it was just as awesome experience, though, wasn't it? They weren't as good as us. So, guys, let's let's talk a bit about the album. Um, because it's slight change in sound, though it sounds uh, for this one. It's called the Planets One. Yeah. Um, so this is Mercury, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what can we expect on this album? Well, basically, we we took a slightly different approach because most albums you hear nowadays, it's one singer. It's it's kind of like the same thing. As you probably gathered, we're, we're quite into the Beatles, and I always loved the fact that you had two frontmen plus George Harrison plus Ringo. So with this band, Alex sings, I sing. Um, Paul is a brilliant singer songwriter as well. And George sings. So we thought, let's let's do... We haven't really had that very much recently, where you have, like, four singers. Yeah. So we decided to do that. And, um, you know, Al and I, the songs we wrote together, um, we, we kind of share vocal duties on... I mean, one, Alex just sang Wonderland, but, you know, I'm singing The River and a few of the others. 
And so it's kind of different, but we're all doing the same thing. And it, we, with, with the album, we didn't want it just to be a collection of songs. We wanted to do a listening experience. So we really f- spent hours and hours thinking about how we'd get that right. Oh, nice. So um, when we did the, the sessions at Abbey Road, we didn't do it one after the other. We, we kind of left a bit of time to think, how do we want this to sound? So, you know, on two of the tracks, we've got a gospel choir in. You know, we've got, um, you know, Dave, our sax player, he, um, he actually got um, a brass section to come and do, we wrote this sort of Motown tribute song called No Connection. So we, we kind of featured a lot of brass on that. And so we did all these great things. You know, a friend of mine is a brilliant double bass jazz player so i got him in to do the double bass on lbj for example and that really gives that kind of rockabilly thing so there's a lot of things going on yeah. the record but we wanted it more than anything else for, to be a listening experience as the great albums of the late 60s early 70s were love it so, so the idea is yeah. when you put the record on which you got now I do, you can li- you can have the listening experience there but you know i mean some songs just came out best you know th- it, we're very happy with all of it. I mean, especially with Chris Bolster and those guys working on it at Abbey Road. Is but this the chap who was um, Paul McCartney's sound engineer? Yeah, he was his, his engineer. He's worked with Oasis as well. Wow. He's worked with, um, I mean, he's Foo worked with all of them. Yeah. He's worked with a lot. Radiohead. I mean, he's brilliant. And he's actually a lovely guy. He's 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 he's, he's tough. Yeah. But I mean, he's he's a very nice guy. And he's got a fantastic sense of humor. He, he just, you know, we 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 just worked with him really well. And. Um, <laughs> And it was great, you know, working with people like that. And and then, you know, they've got all these instruments there, like the Hammond organ the Beatles used. I mean, God, you He's know. He's got an engineer that you have to ask him, oh, can you turn that up? You can't ask him directly. <laughs> ask sort of him write, to ask write him. Write him a note. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but <laughs> but we, we, we just had access to all this incredible stuff there. And, and it was, you know, it comes out in the record and we, you know, there's a harpsichord, for example, on, on Paul's track, The Message. And you the know, organ that uh, was on Procol Harum. And yeah, the, 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 the song that Procol Harum did, um, White Shade of Pale, on, we, we actually used that Hammond organ on, on the album. It was just magical. <laughs> Just experience. mad, absolutely. Uh, now, gentlemen, we have The River. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Sung thanks. by, recorded in Studio Two yes. of Abbey Roads. Um, very quickly, is there anything we need to know before you introduce it on BBC Radio? Well, Facebook? this is actually a song Alex and I wrote. Um, pretty much 50 50 we just we just we just came up with it and um it's one that really came out where we really like it and it's our current it's single so. book by yeah it, basically I, we read this book by john grisham called the painted house it wasn't a legal thriller but it, it was something completely different but he'd wrote this book and i thought oh that's interesting and we just wrote a song about it and so that's it this so it? the thing about the cotton picking fields in arkansas that that's what that's what that is people were like, we writing about there it was a book we read so Guys, they probably want a commission now. But- <laughs> from the song, but there you go. <laughs> Guys, it's been listening. an absolute pleasure. Um, this is Al Rots and the Planets and the River. Thank you. When the river ran dry The cotton picking season Hadn't even reached its high Returning to the painted house The dream that I could see Nothing else for miles around And then you set me free All those years You did what you could
Was that? that is the latest single from Al Ross and the Planets. That is called The River, and they'll be touring locally quite soon, hopefully. And uh, their album, The Planets One, is out now. 